Well hello and welcome to a video giving you an update on my 3D printer. As you can see I've managed to get a MOSFET and in fact I've got two and the um, plan is to get this fitted to take some of uh, the strain off the power supply because I've been finding my A-net uh, has been getting a little bit uh, kind of overstretched and on longer prints the power will just randomly cut out. Um, some of that has also been bed levelling problems as well I think. Now I have been printing out a few bits for board gaming so for example I don't think I've shown this off before it's a hex tile holder so for Eclipse I've also printed off um, the kind of cube tray holder. Uh, I've also printed off some bases so this is like a uh, earth, cracked earth base that I got off uh, I think Thingiverse if I remember correctly so I tried printing a few of those off. I've also managed to find some nice substitute coins for um, Gloomhaven so printed off quite a few of those. Um, I've also started trying printing some uh, markers for Star Trek Adventures the RPG so that's one option I found and then I actually took a picture and converted it and it's in this pile of coins somewhere I'll see if I can find it um, but uh, it's evading me typical uh, I did also try printing off some Star Trek away mission figures um, these are about 15 mil maybe maybe 20 I think they're 15 um, they look good from a distance but up close uh, there's string in and uh, where the support material was on this one on the back it, it's not quite worked out sadly so that is something I'm going to have to um, re-look at so there's one just with a coat of paint on just to give you an idea but as you can probably see on the back the support materials caused absolute havoc so not so happy about that so ah oh, here you go here's the self-designed um, Star Trek Adventures token so just a circle with a Star Trek logo. So that's been sort of little bitty work. I've uh, been doing some more World War II tanks. Uh, I also printed off a spool guide um, for my printer. Let's see if I can show it. Unfortunately, it's a little bit dark in the corner. So, okay, so it's a little bit dark, but as you can see, I've got a glass bed, I've got a filament guide to guide the filament into the hot end some braces and then up in the top left there you might just about see a filament guide for pulling the filament over uh, the printer and in towards the hot head. Now I've also printed this piece off which is actually for my niece, she wants it for uh, a costume she wants to wear um, so I'm going to do that for her. You might also recognise this from earlier videos, I'm pretty sure I showed that off and if you've been following my Twitter you might recognise what this is and um, yeah I'm also working on something a little bit bigger uh, this is MechWarrior Online models and uh, they've been all nicely sliced and made into STL files so the, the AC20, the SRM6, the fist, the arms, the shoulder that's all separate now currently the legs and this shoulder are not fitted um, with glue I did have to glue this arm though because um, it kept sliding around. I also had to cut the laser off and re-glue it because it was actually back to front, which is a bit of a shame. Now my earlier attempt at the arm didn't quite work, so I've actually got potentially uh, a battle damaged piece, so I might print off a separate shoulder and leave the spare one uh, available. And as you can see with the Jenna, um, I got a feeling I didn't glue the legs, maybe I did. And I definitely did glue the arms, but I'm finding them impossible to move. Uh, and I did trim the little kind of uh, spoiler uh, on the roof there because um, I, I found it was in risk of getting snapped off. Now, this hasn't been printed at super high quality. I think it's 0.2 uh, using my generic A-net profile rather than my high quality one. But um, they've turned out pretty well. Uh, there's some extra bits to print, for example, the groin cover. And one of the big problems I've found with gluing this bad boy together is there are a little um, a little element of um, shrinkage going on, so not all the pieces line up 100%. Um, so a little bit of green stuff might be needed. But more problematic is the super glue is taking so well that as soon as you touch these two pieces together, they seem to get 
absolutely stuck rock solid it's very hard to move so on this hand for example I, I was able to pull it off and reseat it because it wasn't quite in the right position at first but yeah that's something to watch out for with this model that as soon as these two pieces join together they can form a really good bond and, and you can't actually get the piece off without damaging it um, when it came to the Jenna I had to print this out three times uh, the first time I printed it um, I tried to print it all in one go which was a bad idea the second time I printed it I printed it out in all of its components but all in one go and that didn't work out so I then printed out every single piece individually so the leg the front and back um, parts of the the groin the front and back parts of the main body each individual arm etc etc uh, and that worked great and then I've been printing out this worrying that I'm going to run out of PLA I am down to the last of my uh, bits of the roll uh, I've actually got some PLA turning up this week so hopefully uh, if I do run out it's not going to be long before I can finish this piece off but um, I'm worried that I might run out of PLA before I get a whole arm printed and then there are a couple of extra little bits of dressing like the groin piece and some little dangly bits for the waist etc so really pleased with how that's come out and it scales well with this uh, little sci-fi tank uh, that I got off Thingiverse and uh, it's a nice decent scale uh, as I say it's for kind of 10 mil infantry so what is it 1 150 1 100 that sort of scale and it looks great um, as a rough piece uh, painted up it's going to be good to see what it looks like and I'm really pleased that uh, I've been able to get hold of these because MechWarrior Online uh, has produced really really nice modern versions of these Battletech classics and um, just looks so much better again if you go check out my twitter you'll see this stood next to the original pieces and the the atlas if i remember correctly comes up to about its arm so obviously a lot bigger i guess what four times the size compared to a 28 mil you know tall atlas um so you know that this figure here is kind of like 32 35 mil high you know it's a, a fair old size um, so you know this I think is officially a 15 mil tank but it, it works really well with the battle tech stuff so really pleased that uh, got a nice little force coming together anyway that's pretty much it for the A-net um, as I say I'm going to do some little tweaks see if it makes uh, the print better um, I'm currently printing with just Camel K I think it's called PLA I've got a couple of rolls of that turning up later but I've actually bought off Amazon some allegedly better quality PLA that costs about the same once you include shipping uh, of the camel stuff from gear beasts uh, uh, gear best sorry so um, yeah it's going to be interesting to see how much better the quality is when I drop um, the layer height and use this fancy PLA so um, that's something to look forward to well I think I'll wrap this video up uh, I've actually painted uh, the Jenna just now just to uh, give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, there is a little sign of um, some layers there and a little bit of a ridge line where I've joined the two halves. So um, something to look out for. I'm probably gonna do a similar thing with the Atlas and then maybe get some green stuff and sand, start sanding things down. Uh, Cause obviously nice big centerpiece model like that. Um, you wanna get a good quality finish. I am tempted to print this bigger, um, but to do that, I think my A-net's not quite reliable enough. We're, we'll see if the, the MOSFET takes care of that. Um, but um, probably my next video is actually gonna be talking about an alternative printer. I've been looking at the Prusa, um, really liking the look of that. Unfortunately, the build volume on that is not the best. It's still kind of, uh, what is it, 220, 250-ish. Um, there are other bigger format printers, for example, the Creality CR10 line, and there's the the regular, the S, and then the I think four and five, which give you massive build quantity, uh, build um, dimensions. Now, I don't think I'm ever going to print huge objects, particularly with something like a a Creality or a Net, because of the reliability. So, I'm really hoping for a Mark IV from Prusa with a nice decent like you know four by four by five hundred or five hundred all round build volume but with that Prusa set it leave it for three days totally safe in the knowledge that it's not gonna you know give you major problems um, so yeah look for a video shortly about a new printer um,
because uh, I am in the market for an upgraded and larger format printer and um, it's going to be interesting to see how quickly that turns up. Anyway, you can hear my printer um, wearing away. It's printing the lower arm uh, assembly, so uh, the bit to go on here. And then the last bit I've got is the fist for the kind of complete model. And then it's just the little ancillary little attachments, and then I'll be done. And then maybe an alternative shoulder so I could do a, a blown-off arm version of the Atlas. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little quick update on where I'm at with my 3D printing. And as I say, uh, I would have finished all of my PLA uh, once I've, I've finished off this atlas here. So uh, there'll be no more printing for me until my PLA order turns up, which hopefully I've just been notified should be tomorrow.